Hello, I'm going to look into what your person is thinking, feeling, wanting. Um, this is an oracle deck I created that was specifically made for dream work, astral realm work, you know, seeing what's going on behind the scenes. So that's going to be the focus of this reading today. Please also keep in mind that you might be resonating with my individual zodiac readings and you might not resonate with this one. This might not be your story. This is just you know, I don't know if this is going to be your energy group. So if it doesn't resonate, it just means it's not for you. But let's see what the cards have to say. What's going on behind the scenes? Sacred gift. Grounding, Path of the Seer, okay, Conscious, so you got a lot of good energy here, Channeling Energy Shift, wow, Music, Vampireism, okay, so it looks like you're leveling up big time here. Sorry, let me get this straight for you guys. So it looks like there's a major uh, energy shift that's about to, that's either taking place right now or it's about to take place. You've been feeling kind of off lately. It could be because of this. It could be just because of all that um, ascension type of energy that you're going through right now. Divine intervention, divine love and support, giving or receiving high vibrational healing energy. So I think that your guides, your spirit guides have given you some sort of sacred gift. They've, this is some sort of, um, it's like an energetic telepathic gift. So this is ascension. This is um, maybe developing an, a new psychic sense that maybe was underdeveloped before, like uh, clairsentience, clairaudience, uh, whatever it might be. So we've got grounding here. So the energy and freedom you seek will be found in nature. This is also about earth magic, but I take it more to mean like you need to ground yourself right now and sort of shield yourself because you're, you're, you, you might be going through an awakening process, like almost like a death and rebirth sort of process where it's just like you have all these psychic downloads coming in at once and it might be a little bit overwhelming for you. You know, we have Path of the Seer. So it's like you have these psychic abilities and now you're just getting more deeply in touch with them. Purging and rebirth. Maybe going through a purging process as well as your body um, sort of adapts to these new energies that are coming in so quickly. A lot of times at Ascension it does or energy, energy shifts, awakening process, whatever you want to call it. Um, a lot of times it does happen quickly. Like you might find yourself within a period of even a few months just going through something that marks a before and after period in your life. And this can also often happen after you've met your twin flame. They might trigger it for you. Or it's like you might find yourself just channeling or just getting really deeply into witchcraft or um, trance work or whatever it might be just just getting in tune with the spiritual side of things that maybe you hadn't fully accepted before like maybe just have seeing the synchronicity um just seeing like a new side of the world so it's just kind of here to tell you like don't be afraid this this is part of your path it's it's a normal process it's normal to feel like you're going a little bit crazy at first when this energy comes in because if you're not used to channeling and you just start channeling and having these psychic downloads out of nowhere. It, it can be really overwhelming. Um, conscious action and effort. Intentional telepathy. The person in question is fully awake and aware. So this is, I think this might be about a twin flame connection where I might be saying this person is aware of this energy. They're aware that you're giving and receiving mutual energy. They're aware... They, they just have some sort of awareness of this, you know, channeling here, psychic awareness. The knowledge and wisdom is coming from an outside source. Breakthrough, intense and sudden change. This energy is coming in quickly. Like I said, it might make you feel a little bit crazy at first because you're not used to it. 
but it's coming in fast. There might be someone who is deliberately trying to telepathically uh, communicate with you too, maybe also through music. This could be about binaural beats or it could just be receiving and sending um, messages through songs. We have a codependency warning here though. Vampirism, that your energy is being drained by something. Hmm, what is the vampirism warning about? Pain, apology, regret. Stagnation, complacency, confusion, uncertainty. So if someone wants to apologize to you, this could be a twin flame that wants to apologize to you. They know that they caused you pain. You guys are telepathically connecting. And what they're not telling you is that they can actually feel this pain that they've caused you. They know that they caused a lot of damage and they're conscious of that. They're conscious of this connection. They're maybe pretending like they don't know you guys have a soul connection or maybe they're maybe there's some kind of energy exchange taking place behind the scenes and they're acting like they just have no idea what that is. You know, I feel like the energy of someone who kind of lied to you or kind of, it's like you're on your path, but it's like they're not helping you on your path. You know what I mean? Like almost like they're almost causing more confusion. They want to apologize. And this could be past energy too, a twin flame from the past. Maybe this is a, a process you went through and now this person is starting to think about you again and they're wanting to apologize they're wanting to show you this regret but they're stagnant and their pride keeps getting in the way they're confused and they're uncertain if you would accept the apology they're just something in their life is just kind of keeping them on autopilot mode so they don't really know for sure if you would yeah if you would accept the apology or not but um with vampirism, it's almost like they might be feeding on your energy to some degree, though, you know? Like, maybe you need to kind of watch out for that person. Caution and discernment. Could be spirits on the other side, ancestors trying to guide you and protect you, too. Dreamwalker, lucid dreaming, astral traveling. Well, I think you're connecting with this person pretty deeply in your dreams right now. Banish, let go of, push away. Is this, let me see. Let me see here. Is this a warning? Is this a twin flame warning? Okay, this could be a warning about someone. This might not even be your twin flame. This could be a false twin flame. But there is a warning that there is someone that's kind of pulling you in with romantic energy. They're... It's like you get caught up because you're on this path where you're chant like you're start you either this is either past or current energy or energy that you're just feeling like you're just about to come into. But you're it's like you're on this path where you're you know you're channeling and you have all these psychic downloads coming in at once. And I think your your guides are just kind of warning you, like, when you go through that, this energy can come in quickly. Like, it came in for me really quickly too when it happened to me a few years ago. It just it was fast. Like I went from I, like my it was like a before and after process in my life like it marked a before and after period for sure like I started going into trances I had a lot of weird crap happen that I still to this day do not fully understand what happened to me but I, I went through some weird stuff and I think this this warning is kind of like saying you know ground yourself and shield yourself because it's a beautiful process like when you have that happen I mean it's scary too because sometimes you feel like you're going crazy because you're having these dreams and visions and all these psychic downloads and you're feeling this person's energy and just all this stuff and sometimes it's overwhelming if you don't understand that it understand it so your guys are saying like ground yourself uh protect yourself really keep your energy clear um, because there's, when you start astral traveling, it's like, there's a lot of good energies in the astral, but there's also a lot of bad energies that want to use you. So it's like, it's important to take the proper, you know, grounding and shielding techniques, um, kind of figure out what you're doing. Um, you know, spirits can be deceptive. Spirits can deceive you. Like they, they can pretend I've had spirits do that to me. I've, I've, I, it's crazy as it sounds. I've had spirits uh, like dark spirits pretending to be something they're not. And it took me a while to figure it out. Even being a psychic, it still took me a while to figure out what was going on. 
and like recognize that energy. So it's saying like not all that glitters is gold here, you know? Um, your path is beautiful though. Like stay on your path, like, like trust that, you know what I mean? Like you might be purging, you might be, you know, going through all these ascension symptoms, like just leveling up, just having all these psychic downloads coming in. Like it's, it's your path. You're, you're a psychic. You're meant to be on this path. It's just saying as this energy comes in also like do your research, you know, ground, protect yourself. Um, if you go into the astral realm, if you're going to trances, channeling, you know, uh, just take proper uh, protective techniques and, uh, you know, be cautious and realize that, you know, not everything in the astral realm is your friend. There's a lot of, of darker entities out there too. And, you know, it's important to try to keep your vibration high, especially when you're doing psychic work like this. Otherwise you can get attachments on you from, um, you know, lower realm beings. So, so yeah, it's important to really protect yourself here. I feel like with the vampirism warning, it's warning you that either this is your twin flame doing this, or it could be a karmic. It could be your twin flame's karmic that's trying to throw you off your path and kind of drain your energy. Um, I think you know what your story is, but for whoever this person is, it's either your twin flame, I believe, or it's your twin flame's karmic that knows about you and they're trying to throw you off your path. But this person is like, if it is your twin flame, I almost feel like, since this energy is new to you, like they're playing on that, like all this like romantic energy, like this, you know what I mean? Like you're starting to channel and it's like, you might be channeling some, a being someone who's draining your energy and kind of abusing this like empathy and this newfound openness that you have. And, uh, you know, trying to get in here and there may be more conscious, whoever this person is, whether it's a twin flame or a car or twin flames karmic or whatever it might be, this person kind of needs to be pushed away and you need to protect yourself more from this person and, you know, take better protective techniques when going into going in astrally. Cause it's like, you can't, um, I mean, like I said, some, some beings have, have negative intentions, you know, it's, it's a whole nother world when you start, when you start astral traveling and like really being conscious of astral traveling, it's like a whole nother world that you got to adapt to. So keep that in mind. But, uh, but yeah, this person is conscious. So this person, again, this person might be pretending or they might've pretended like they don't know your twin flames or they might have, maybe there's some kind of witchcraft or energetic exchange going on between you guys. And they keep pretending like they don't know what's going on. And they, they're, they're aware of it though. They, they are aware they're lying to you. Spiritual aid. Yeah. Sigil magic. These uh, amulets, stones, crystals, something, spirit animals. Also, yeah, you have, you have these little these beings around you. These like spiritual aids, spirit animals that are trying to guide you and help you through this energy. So listen to them. You know, and this might be a wish granted. This might be something that you prayed for. What is the key to getting out of this energy? The vampirism energy, resting, resting. You know, especially if you get excited about your path as a seer, like you still need to ground and balance, you know, because it can be really easy to detach from the physical world and just basically live in your dreams, live in that astral state. So it's kind of like grounding, resting. Uh, don't, don't overdo it. Like when I first started channeling, I would just, I would sit there and I would channel spirits for like, literally like they think there was a day where I channeled for like seven, eight hours a day. Like I was doing psychic readings in groups on Facebook and people would comment and I would do readings and I would have like my, my apartment was like grand central station for spirits where I would have all these spirits coming in, wanting to talk to like spirits from the other, on the other side, wanting to talk to people through me. And it was like one after another. And I would be sending these messages to people. And it's like, I would do that for eight hours. And I didn't like, I was so used to channeling and I didn't really have anyone to mentor me and guide me through it. So I just burnt myself out. Like I would just keep going and going and I didn't even understand. I didn't even fully understand what was going on. And it took me, I, I'm mostly self-taught. So it took me a while to like kind of figure that out and, and ground myself because, you know, spirits, there's especially ones that have crossed over. Sometimes they're, some of them aren't that friendly. Some of them are very like pushy. Like I, I had one spirit that was like pushing me like, cause he wanted to talk to his daughter and I had to go into this Facebook group and actually describe him, describe his truck, describe all these different things about him and find his daughter. And I found her in the group and like, I had to get them to talk so that he could cross over cause he wouldn't forgive himself. 
and he kept pushing me and like I had to and you know what I mean like I, I mean I know that probably sounds crazy but it's like I had stuff like that happen because I didn't have those boundaries I was just like okay sure I'll channel for all you guys I don't know what's going on and I think this is a message for someone who's like either just come into this energy or like about to come into it like to kind of balance you have to start set really strong firm boundaries with spirits you have to really learn and figure out what you're doing especially going into the astral realm work you know I, I have had negative entity attachments on me in the past just from from diving in and not you know what I mean just like having that flood in at once and being tricked by spirits and it took me a while to kind of learn and grow and figure figure out how to differentiate differentiate different energies and whatnot so this is just a a, a warning for someone that's that's on this on this path of the seer and it's not saying for you to to turn back or anything like that definitely not it's just saying that you know don't get so excited that you just keep like diving in and it's like oh you're all good you know what I mean like you you gotta you do have to figure out the astral realm and how to adapt and how to be able to differentiate different spirits and and realize that not all spirits are trustworthy um you know, just grounding. That's, that was my problem. I didn't ground. I'm still not good at grounding. I still just, I'll still just like channel and do readings for you guys. And then just like be in bed for the next day. Cause I'm just like, I don't really ground a lot as much as I should. So it's kind of like a warning. Don't do what I did. <laughs> um, you know, ground, protect yourself, look up shielding pick, uh, techniques. There's a lot of, of really good shielding techniques, like bubbling yourself and visual, envisioning yourself in a bubble of light. Um, just really being aware, you know what I mean? Being really aware. Because I think a lot of people dive in to, to witchcraft or to the astral realm or whatever else. And then it's like they, you know, see the spirits that are around them. Like they see like demonic entities or lower lower entities or um, just any kind of dark spirit. And it's like they freak out and they're like, oh my God, witchcraft is evil or psychic work is evil. And it's like, it's not evil. It's just, you took the blindfold off. You already had that stuff around you. This or stuff was already in the universe. The only difference is that you took the blindfold off and now you can see everything that's around you. But the practice itself is not evil. It's just your awareness freaked you out. So so yeah, so grounding and protection and, and, you know, figuring out what you're doing in the astral realm. Uh, don't be deceived by, by spirits, you know, they, spirits can lie. That's something that most people don't realize that spirits can lie. I have had spirits lie to me before and there's even been times when it's taken me a while to figure it out. I've had it, um, luckily I'm a lot better now, like I'm more, I've, practiced and I've, I've gone through this trial and error process and you might go through this trial and error process too. You know what I mean? Sometimes this is a really messy, chaotic process where you do feel like you're going a little bit crazy at first and you just kind of have to get through it. Um, but you know, I, I've, if it, I've even had spirits try to lie to me when I've been doing readings for people when like I've had like an ex come in and be like oh I'm their true love and it's like I can feel that now and I'm like no you're not like I can I can sense that energy like I can sense darker spirits now or people's negative intentions like I can kind of tell now I'm like mm -mm. <laughs> like I I know I can I have better a better sense of who's coming in I had have a better sense of of who's who and so it's like it's just it's a learning process it, it's you know just saying it's it's a learning process so there's just kind of that they want you to keep going with this path they don't want it to freak you out they just want to make sure that you're protecting yourself and grounding yourself and and doing your research and learning and um you know being aware of what's around you as you go on this path and there is a warning that someone is lying someone's conscious of of your connection or they're conscious of something and they're lying to you and pretending like they're not and they might be feeding on you so so you got to watch out for that. If your energy is being drained, you got to kind of just protect yourself. Are there any final messages here? Twin flame. Yeah, I think this is a twin flame that's doing this. This deck is available for sale, by the way. I make these. Uh, and if you're interested, just send me an email and I will give you the info. I'm going to have an Oracle card shop up eventually. I just haven't really gotten around to it yet. Yeah, twin flame. Okay, twin flame deception. Lies, gossip. Lower realm influence, dark magic, bad intentions, lying. This is either your twin flame lying or it's your twin flame's karmic lying. 
sex magic. <clears throat> Telepathic sexual thoughts might be draining you through sex magic in some way. Nightmares, sleepless nights, filled with deep regrets, chaotic mental state, fear and anxiety. It's almost like your twin flame like feels all this regret for something that happened or there's some kind of anger or some kind of issues between you two and it's like instead of just taking accountability and apologizing for it, they would rather just continue to be this toxic person and continue to drain you. And so it's kind of saying like you got to shield yourself from whoever this person is that's draining you. You got to shield yourself, you know? It's it's hard to to balance the astral realm and the physical realm when you first get into it. Like I didn't balance. I was I was like gone. Like I would just go into trances. I would go into like mirror trances. I would I would do these strange rituals. I was like just detached from the physical world when all this energy came in and it took me a while to ground myself and like come back, you know, because it's so exciting too. It's like you're you're taking the blindfold off and realizing the true nature of the world. So it's it's hard to kind of balance sometimes. You might need a mentor. I gotta give you a warning about this though, because I have had mentors in the past that have um well you could even have a mentor someone pretending to be a mentor that's draining you. That's a potential warning. A mentor might be deceiving you. But I've had a lot of mentors in the past that have actually been toxic. So you really, if you're going to find a mentor, you really have to be care careful, careful to find the right one. Because so many mentors are just narcissists. They're narcissists and they're psychic vampires. And they just want to drain you. Or they want, they maybe have like a certain way of doing witchcraft or a certain way of astral traveling. And they want their... Um, their name, their, they want fame and fortune. They want their name to be spread out in the community. And so it's not really about helping you. It's just an ego thing for them, you know, or they want to like drain you or they want to, you know, just keep that in mind with mentors. It's like, maybe you do need a mentor, but you need to find the right one. The right mentor is going to try to try to push you down your path. They're trying to get you, they're going to try to get you to discover their path, like your particular path. A, a fake mentor, like a like an egomaniac type of mentor, they're going to try to get you to go down their specific path. Like say say your mentor is a Wiccan. Well, they're going to try to get you to go down a Wiccan path. They're going to try to instill their beliefs in, in you. When it's like a genuine mentor is going to try to push you down your path. Like you find your own beliefs. You find your answers and they're just kind of there to help you if you fall, if you need some advice. You know what I mean? It's more of like a gentle energy. But if you feel, because some mentors are just so controlling and it's like you need to t trust your intuition if you're feeling that controlling energy from a mentor. That's why it's like, I I mean, I, I'm self-taught because I, I kept running into mentors that were uh, taking me off my path, trying to control me, trying to get me to do things their way. You know, it's like their truth was the only way. And there's you're going to find a lot of that in the spiritual community. And so I'm self-taught because at a certain point, I just stopped trying to find a mentor. I'm just like, I'm not going to deal with that. I'm not going to deal with people that, that aren't, like they, they weren't helping me um, expand on my own abilities. They were trying to get me to do things their way. They were trying to get me to be, you know what I mean? Go down their, their specific religion or their specific path, their specific moral code. And like a good mentor is going to try to get you to find, like find your own path. There's going to be room for creativity, for questions, for growth. That's another thing about fake mentors is they can't be questioned. You question them and they will snap because it's like they're control freaks. You know, a real mentor is okay with being questioned. Like they understand that your path is, there's going to be questions, you know? So keep that in mind. Like, like I said, I'm self-taught because at a certain point I was just like, you know what, I'm, I'm not dealing with this energy and I just learned on my own and I just went through the trial and error process as chaotic as it was. And I could probably still use a mentor to be honest. It wouldn't hurt for me to have one, but, but you, you see what I'm saying here? Like, be careful with that. Because if you're in this energy, you're going to have those little psychic vampire types come into you like, oh, I can mentor you. I can teach you. It's like you're going to feel that controlling energy. And don't get me wrong. There are real mentors out there. Like there are real genuine mentors out there. But it's it's you got to find them. You know what I mean? Like it's 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 a process finding them. Don't just trust anybody that comes to you pretending to be a mentor figure. Okay, we have any final messages really quick. Priestess. Spiritual leader in the community. Maybe that's who your mentor should be. Maybe a woman. 
Hidden desires, secret sphere of rejection, shy secret admirer, hidden feelings, shield. Hmm. Defensive magic, yeah. I think this twin flame or the twin flame karmic has secrets and you need to shield. This card confirms that this energy in question has manifested in the physical world. It's not just in your head. So yeah, your twin is more aware than they realize. You might have some block chakras that you need to work on too. It happens. It happens. Dreaming. There's a lot of psychic energy, a lot of dreams too, but there's like some manip manipulation here that's going on with these dreams. So it's like you got to really be careful. Um, I hope these resonate with you. If you have any questions, I know some of this energy is confusing. Like that's why I don't use these too often just because I know this is kind of more of a, this is more for more of you that like do witchcraft and astral work and dream work. But, but if you have any questions or any comments or whatever, just, just, you know, let me know below. Um, and if you'd like to purchase these cards, send me an email. If you'd like a private reading, send me an email and any donations are appreciated. Even just a dollar. My PayPal link is below. So thank you for watching and please subscribe if it resonates too. Bye.